Hi, everyone. It's Deborah Hamilton, and it's 630 on the last meeting of the MAP community for 2023. I want to thank you all for being here. MAP, of course, means make a plan for your pets, appoint caregivers, address the needs of your pet, and of course, publish all of that information so people can follow the, the things you want to do. Uh, this is Deborah Hamilton, and I am the crazy facilitator of this community because to me, it is so important for us to have a place to go and people to talk to, to make sure that this process is not as scary as it can be when you first look at it or when you first talk to your trust and estate attorney. It's interesting. I was just contacted by the New York Women's Bar Association to do a program on this. And I spoke to a trust and estate attorney who um, is going to possibly join me. And she just talked about end of life. And I said to her, well, what about all the other Ds? And she said to me, they're really what Ds? So we are way ahead on the um, address the needs of your pets. Uh, I am looking forward to speaking to the Bichon Club later this year on how to make a plan for your pets and how to build better contracts because in breed clubs, don't we all need to do that so that we can maintain peace and harmony within our membership and on our boards of directors. Uh, so also rescues, also shelters. It has been a boon this year for me to go and help everyone, all of the interested and allied communities to have a conversation with each other so that they can help pets long-term, short-term. So for me, it's been the best. So I want to welcome everyone tonight to the last, I can't believe it, of 2023. I'm going to check in with everyone. Susan, you were first up. How's everything going? You know, it's not too bad. Um, Maggie is still biting Tom and showing some aggression toward Tom. She hasn't bit me in quite a while. I think she's starting to come around a little bit, but honestly, I've had my moments with her and I wasn't sure, you know, I, I still debated in my head whether we can keep Maggie because I do worry that her barking is very upsetting to my son. You know, he's disabled, so um creates a lot of turmoil. Uh she barks at every opportunity, every occasion. I still don't have her on a leash. She's three. I'm, she's four. She's four. So yeah. so I am now living your life because I mean Stella is a delight, but she's a spaniel. And so anything I ever said negatively about an Irish setter um, is all taken back now that I'm living with an English Cocker Spaniel who <laughs> has oh, a no. huge attitude, huge attitude. And my husband, whose dog she is, um, doesn't have a lot of follow through. So you know what I mean, Connie, you know, no consistency. And so I have enrolled him in a class because he needs to learn how to do it. And I'm auditing the class so wow. that I can do exactly what he's doing with Stella so that there's consistency whenever she's in my company. Right. Because I was doing what I needed to do not to have her jump on me, not to have her be reactive on a walk, um, not to bite and chew on poor Mariah. And um it wasn't consistent with my husband. So now I'll be consistent with him. He'll be consistent with me. And I think that's the one thing that over the years we've been together, which I've been thrilled about, the consistency of trainer and training um, makes it a little difficult for Maggie to know because it was very yeah. funny. Honey, you'll, you'll get a kick out of this. Uh, the trainer said, you know, we don't do dominance over or alpha over the dogs anymore. And I said, have you met an Irish setter? <laughs> a Wheaton Terrier? You know, it's not about dominance, but I do walk through the door first. I tell them to wait and then they can go, but I go through the door first. It's just a thing with me. And um, so for me, it really is important 
to establish that with Stella as well. And she's uh, seven months old on the 19th. And let me tell you, she has a complete mind of her own and knows exactly what she's doing. She's in her teenage years. So Susan, I can only tell you I am where you are. She doesn't bite. Uh, that's the good thing, except poor Mariah. Um, and we have taken her by the, you know what, and looked at her and told her, no, thank you. Uh, yeah. It's just not appropriate. And I know that it's hard for you to do consistency because your husband and your son can't follow through, but it really is so important for Maggie to let her know today was our first day in class. And uh, my husband was supposed to practice settle, which is you get a blanket and you throw food on the blanket and it's um, not a blanket. It's sort of like a mat and the dog isn't supposed to see where the food comes from. So when hmm. they move away from the blanket, you throw food on the blanket and then they go, oh, food on the blanket. And then when they move away and they're not paying attention, you throw two or three more pieces. And it's in lieu of her dinner, because I know that Maggie's a little heavy. So in lieu of her chow, you would use that. Or she uses Cheerios, which I thought nobody would ever eat, but they do. Um, yeah. So it's it starts them to settle so they know a place to go to settle in tonight. Uh, Jim put the mat down and he was doing some work on an email in the dining room. It wasn't even where he usually practices with her. And she went and settled on the blanket. Wow. That's a great suggestion. And maybe I can try to do that. I, I have a blanket set out for her um, and actually have an old bio mat underneath that I keep turned on. And I thought, okay, she's just overwrought. You know, she needs to relax. She'll go there. I put her little stuffed dog on the mat, uh, has like a beating heart in it. Yeah, and I think you're trying too hard. I think she just needs a plain old mat. Um, yeah. A bath mat, a, a, a little mat that you put outside the bathtub, you know, whatever. And she can't see where the food's coming from. So when mm -hmm. you're sitting there at your desk, maybe the mat will be behind you. And every time she leaves the mat and she can't see you, you put the food on the mat. Because hmm. Stella was like, where is this food coming from? And I'm not going to leave it because <laughs> this mat seems to yeah. be like the mat. They call it the magic mat. And um, <laughs> I, of course, dubbed it the all good things come from this mat. So uh, this is the all good things mat. And she goes, I like that. I think that's, or the giving mat. I think that's what so I said. So you've been yeah. using the Cheerios as your yeah, food? Cheerios. Yeah, she said to really? you. And she breaks them in half. So huh. it's like, she said it's. It's a very low value award to her, but some dogs think they're great. So try that. And then we'll check in after the holidays to see and after the new year to see how you're doing. But if she gets to know that this place is a place to settle, she'll go there. So I'm I'm hoping that in 2024, Maggie um, recognizes that she needs to toe the line and uh, we'll get her yeah, there. Exactly. Exactly. Totally. That's right. <laughs> Connie, how are the uh, Wheatons? Well, <clears throat> pardon me, right now it's wet wheat and weather in all up and down the state of California. As you can see, it's only uh, 3.38 in the afternoon, uh, and it sh normally I should never have lights on at this time, but I do because it's pouring down rain. Um, but we are fine, thank you, and I'm very proud to announce on the opposite side of the behavioral spectrum that uh, Mr. Casey uh, has uh, is now officially, according to the American Kennel Club, uh, an Irish farm dog, like his breed standard says they derive from. Uh, he earned his farm dog uh, certified title uh, on November 12th. A bunch of us went up to uh, the Antelope Valley, north Los Angeles, way north Los Angeles County, uh, to an event that was uh, hosted by the Belgian Tervuren uh, Club of Southern California, but there was only one turf <laughs> that was there. There were, I, I would say, about 13 or 14 of us, uh, only two of us, um, uh, the turf, uh, who is owned by a very dear friend of mine who was actually one of the evaluators. Um, and then Casey are, according to AKC, uh, herding title eligible. Wow. The other dogs, the uh, the rest of the dogs were uh, all sporting dogs and a couple of border terriers. And uh, among the among the sporting breeds, uh, there was one golden and the rest were cockers. So who knew? But at any rate, everybody passed with flying colors. And uh, speaking of uh, 
magic objects. Uh, Casey, Casey was terrific. He had never really seen stock before. And he was just totally cool with the, with the, um, with the sheep, with the horses that were there. Uh, the only issue was that there was a Kuvaj who was the flock guardian and guarding about 150 sheep. And she didn't like all these interloping dogs she on her to farm. Why all these threats to her flock were there. Exactly. So they did have to put the Kuvaj in, in another, in another pen. Uh, with with another set of che- sheep from the ones that we were working with, but uh, but everybody settled down and and were cool. The only issue from a behavioral standpoint is one of the tests is that your dog has to jump on a bale of hay and stand there and then jump off. Well, Casey is very very used to jumping on objects. I mean, he's a ramp eligible dog in confirmation. So he's been going up and down a ramp in, in dog shows since he was seven months old. Uh, he he jumps on my electric grooming table, which I lower to the floor and then raise, uh, but he jumps on it to save my rotten back. But uh, hay is um, very organic and it's something that is good for a boy to lift his leg on. So, so those of us who had males, particularly intact males, we're holding our breath. And I was and like, hoping they would not leave their name and address for the next person using this pile of hay. Exactly. And and the uh, uh, the two evaluators, one of whom was my friend Pam, and the other was was uh, a herding judge who actually owned the farm, and she she breeds turbs. Uh, we were all saying, okay, he'll just get up. He'll put his four paws, you know, one, two, three, four on the floor, and then he'll jump off. And he did exactly that. And that was that was the only nervous making exercise was, you know, would would he do a, a, a Radio City Rockets pirouette? But he did not. And uh, so so all is well. Uh, and in fact, we we received the actual certificate in the mail uh, yesterday. So he's Yay. official. Yay. Well, this is a good year for Mr. Casey because he also got a CH this year. Oh, no, no. He's had his CH. He's had, he has had his CH since January of 2022, and he earned his GCH uh, that August. Uh, well, he earned he, his, he, he, he I, earned I, his. Time flies for me. Because time I, flies, right. Like he we've earned only his been G- all together for a year or so, and it's been. That's three, right. And it'll be you know, four he, in March, so hello. Right. He he earned his championship at, at the Palm Springs Cluster right after New Year's in 2022, and then just went roaring through to his grand championship and finished that August at Santa Barbara. So, but he's been adding all kinds of titles to the right side of his name. Which is fun. That's good time. And I have to say for everyone here and for everyone listening, if you can find a trainer near you um, who is a gentle trainer, uh, you can do a lot of things with your dogs and you don't have to get an AC, AKC title if you don't want to. But there are so many things. Like I spoke to my trainer, the trainer for my husband's dog today. And I said, you know, I'd really like to do a therapy dog with my Irish setter. I'd really like to do agility. She goes, well, there's nobody really around here. And, you know, I only train, um, you know, independently. And I said, I got to start somewhere. So I think I will pick up the mat and see if I can have her give me some time where Junie and I can become therapy dogs. He has to start with manners first, not because he's a bad dog. It's because he does what I tell him to do, but it is not, um, he doesn't sit. Like he's not an obedient dog that sits because, you know, Connie, we can't ever have a dog sit, God forbid. You know, Stella sits. I don't know what I'm going to do in the ring and I'll probably get yelled at by the breeder, but what can I do? Jim loves to have her sit. Um, And it's not a fight I want to have. They so know the difference, believe me. Oh, they, they do. do. Not at seven months, but, you know. Yeah, so they she- do. Oh, yeah, they do. I have never, I have always trained my Wheatons uh, from from the time they're little. To sit, to sit for their food and to sit for, you know, whatever. And they learn from the older ones who are always doing rally and obedience. And I have never, ever, ever had a confirmation dog sit in the ring. And the trick is what's around their neck. Yeah. They know the difference between a show lead and yeah. just a regular collar okay, and, right, and, right. and six foot lead to, uh, to work for obedience. On how well I do, because it probably Please will do. be a problem with uh, Stella. It'll be a problem with the other end of the leash. 
because that's usually where it occurs. It's always yes. us. It's never the dogs. It's always us. So, um, Stephanie, how are you? How's Yoda, the baby girl, baby boy, cat? Yes, Yoda is doing really well. Thanks. Um, oh. it, it started to snow a little bit more here in Toronto, Ontario. So we have that slippery weather. But other than that, things are going well. Wonderful. Well, I'm so glad you're here and you've been here for so many of these this year. So I want to appreciate and be grateful to everyone. I'm going to check in with Valerie. It's so good to see you, Valerie. I'm so glad you're back. I want to ask how old is Casey? He is going to be five in March. Okay. So I I didn't know tonight, Deborah but I needed um, a hole in my heart filled. So your group here is doing that for me. Thank you. Oh, we will absolutely do that for you because um, whenever we have holes in our hearts because we've lost something, it is, um, this is the best group ever to be around. So if you want to share with us, go right ahead. If you want to just absorb the gratitude and wonderful camaraderie of this group, um, which is why I do it every every first and third Wednesday. Um, just let us know. Oh, it's absolutely connection. That's what I was looking for. That's what's here. Well, wonderful, wonderful. Well, we're so glad you're here. And we're sending you all sorts of love and affection. I'm I'm sure I speak for everyone here because we all um, know the the holes that come in our hearts when things occur. And um, I know you are such. Um, an empathetic and compassionate person that it's it's really um, hitting you hard, especially mm -hmm. at this time of the year. Mm -hmm. So if you yes, want, indeed, if you want, I'll move on, or if you want to chat more, I'm happy to. Oh. Thank you. You're very welcome. Sending love. So Jan, how's Tonka? How's everything going? I know you've been very busy, and I've been part of a few of the programs that you've been putting on. You have to unmute. Hi, I'm. Um, I wanted to get on and just thank you and wish everybody a good holiday season. Just because I'm driving, <laughs> I was like, okay, well, I'm still going to join. Well, uh, you so. know, I am so glad because I I know that people are very busy at this time of the year, and there's so much that can get in the way. And uh, you know, I think at this time of the year, we want to be thankful for everyone who's helped us get here, um, and also you know, help people get through holidays for all the different reasons that are good and bad. So I'm so glad you're here. Mm -hmm. Tonk is with you? Yeah, yeah, he's with me. Um, he's going to go hang out at my friend Cindy's as I, um, you know, so while I go and go to a play, actually. So he's going to go play. A he's going to play, play while you go to a play. Well, well good. Is it while a, I go to a play. Is it a holiday play or is it? I don't even know. It's an extra ticket my friend had because her um, her daughter's boyfriend got COVID. So she's like, I have an extra ticket. Do you want to go? So I actually have no idea what I'm seeing. But I mean, that's, okay. that's always the best. I love what I don't know what I'm seeing because then I go in with no preconceived ideas. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But Tonka's great. Um, he loves the colder weather. So to him, this is just like pure you know, pure joy to be in colder weather versus being in, you know, heat. So he's like, thinks this is wonderful. Yeah. Mom doesn't think it's so wonderful because I'm, I'm free. I free sometimes, but he's very happy, which is, you know, what we live for. So. I know. Well, Connecticut's like that. I know that Sally is either en route or already there for her first trip away. And she left the dogs with a very nice young man who dressed up all three of his French bulldogs as Santa Claus for some parade down the streets of, <laughs> so, down the streets of Connecticut somewhere. So she will not be on, but I know that she'll be listening later on. So we all wish her a very happy, wonderful holiday with family and everybody a happy, healthy um, new year. Cause we've all had our bouts with COVID and then Gordon, Sally's husband had his bout with babiosis and we've had friends who've been ill and it just, you know, these dogs keep us getting up every morning and cats. Mm -hmm. I have to say that um, I am grateful. I've spent the last 27 days with Jane, my son's cat. She's a domestic short hair, gray with white mittens and a little white milk on her lips. And um, 
I will be sad to see her go back to my son. So I have already told him that whenever he and his fiance, oh, I forgot to say my husband, my son got engaged. My husband got engaged. That would be bad. My son got engaged. So he will be getting married in October in New York. So I'll be up in, Oct in New York um, at the wedding. Uh, but I said to him, anytime he and his fiance Liana are traveling, I am happy to get on a plane uh, and take care of Jane. He goes, mom, that is so expensive. I said, yes, and I don't care. It's really, she sleeps right next to you and that motor running. I don't know how many of you, I know that Stephanie knows, but I don't know how many of you have had cats and that motor, I have never had a cat before. So, and if you rub her belly, the motor gets louder. And when she settled in, the motor is very soft. And of course I have Mariah up here throwing around the, um, Lammy, so we'll get a little squeaky noise. But I'm just so grateful for all of you being here because I'm hopeful and I think I'm right when I say that this is a group that really takes care of each other and takes care of their pets. And when things come up, we're there for each other, which is is really so very important. Um I know that Susan struggles with Maggie and we're all there to support her and, and hope we can give her one more tidbit to take on. We love that Stephanie's our resident cat owner. Um, Jan is our resident um, aromatherapy um, Reiki expert for people and dogs. So we are thrilled. Um, Connie and I are the, uh, the resident breeder owner handlers, preservationist breeders who do all sorts of crazy things with our dogs, as well as we're professionals. I mean, Connie's lucky she's retired. Every Monday I say I'm going to retire because it just, it's just getting a little much. But then somebody calls with a problem and, and I can't not help them out. Um, and of course, Valerie, as you all might remember, because Valerie's been here a few times, she helps people transition with their pets. Um, so she's that person who... Um, does it in a way that that helps that transition be bearable because it's never bearable but she's she's the one who is always there to help us and she's just an all-around fabulous person helping people i um, in the indian community the american indian the native american sorry the native american community um she just is everywhere and wonderful and um she and her her husband has some health issues which sometimes makes it i'm sure very difficult but you know, I send her, I tuck her in my prayers every morning um, because she is such a light and love for veterinary medicine and for pet owners. She's one of those people who become the bridge that I always talk about between veterinary medicine and the pet owner, which sometimes is forgotten. I was just speaking to someone um, the other day from Namvi. They're doing a cyber bullying. Um, and they were saying, well, we're going to put up all these, you know, ways to deal with cyber bullying for the for the um for the team and i said are you going to be transparent and talk to the um pet owners about cyberbullying and what it could be you know seen as and what they could do and how they should act rather than cyberbullying and she said well we never thought of that and i said if you're making rules for the team the team includes the client and you need to make them a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. It's never us against them. It's always rowing the boat in the same direction. Um, so I'm hopeful to continue with that. And I've been asked to do a few teaching gigs um, next year. So I'm going to be spending the first month or so of um, 2024 building the programs. Um, and as I said at the beginning, I'm, I'm going to be going to the Bichon Club uh, and yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to speaking to more breed clubs because they really do need me because I I get to know the clubs through the conflicts that come into my office. I'd rather get to know the clubs before that, um, but sometimes that's not happening. Um, so in the last five minutes, I thought, because this group is so wonderful and giving, I would love for everyone to tell me what the community means to them and what their pet means to them. Because, you know, Thanksgiving is wonderful, but I think the end of the year, we take stock of everything we've done and um, our family, our life, ourselves, please include yourself. Please be happy with what you've done. Um, because as they always say, put your mask on first. You can't 
do anything for anyone, not even your pets, unless you put your mask on first. Um, and so, uh, Jan, I'm going to start with you because you're driving because that's the mean person I am. Oh, no, no. Thank you, because I actually have to get out soon. Um, so every year. I'm so grateful to this group and I am a huge, I, I use gratitude as a tool, like it's like a tool in my toolbox when I kind of feel down. I always, my next thing is like, what do I like go to what I'm grateful for? Cause it gets me out of the space I'm in. But every year I choose a word for my year or two words that kind of sums up my year and what I want to come. So my word for 2024 is unity. I love it. And um, yeah, and it always kind of like works its way in somehow, like where all of a sudden I'll be out and I keep on seeing the word. And I usually don't like, it's not a thought process. It's kind of like I hear a word and I'm like, that's it. <laughs> it's like a feeling like that's it. So choose a word for your year. Awesome. That's such a, that's such good advice for all of us. And that's such a good, easy thing to do. And and I, I can tell you, it's like when I'm looking for a parking space, my mother always finds me one. So if you do pick a word, you're going to see it everywhere. It's going to be used toward you everywhere. And you can use it toward others, which will really make it so special. Thanks, Jen. Of course, you started us off beautifully. Stephanie, tell me what you're grateful for. So grateful for this community group. It's been so uh, helpful, supportive, and a great way to listen to the different types of feedback um, everywhere. And especially for people with pets, because I just care so much about nature, the environment, and of course, all the animals. Um, I love the word unity. My mom asked me yesterday what I wanted um, to set forth for 2024. And I told her balance. Um, Ooh, I love that. Yes. Um, and I want to say um, how special Yoda is to our family, because just like you were saying, <clears throat> every morning, it's just so wonderful to wake up and um, have like my mom and I um, like greet Yoda in the morning and tell him how cute and adorable and, and special he is. So that is something that I would say is very near and dear to my heart. So thank you so much. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, Stephanie, and, and happy new year, Susan. Thank yeah, you. I'm going to say my word for 2024 is going to be sharing. And, you know, I lost my uh, Abby on Christmas Day in 2014, and I was so sad. Christmas always brings a little bit of sadness for me because I had such a great uh, love for that dog. And I try to turn that around into gratitude that I had the time that I had with him. And it was, a you know, maybe I didn't provide the best care. He was, he was almost 16 when he died, but I always want to give my my dog the very best care that I possibly can. And um, because I really appreciate what they bring to my life and how they enrich my life. And so 2024 is a year for me, it's a year of sharing and it's a year of great transition as well. So, um, we will be um, here for you. Thank you. Thank we will you. Be here for you. And I know it's so hard to, excuse me. Sorry, Mer, uh, Merlin. He must be thinking of me up in heaven. Um, Junie wanted to get his nose in. Uh, no, it's really is important when we lose someone close to the holidays or um, a beloved pet during the holidays. It does sort of make you a little, I know, a little sad. And stop. Um, it's, it's interesting because, uh, there was a post on Facebook this week where someone, um, spoke about losing an animal. And like you said, Susan, we are so grateful to have had them on this journey with us, with the adventures they bring. 
it is never long enough. It never will be long enough. Um, however, when I sign cards to people, when I send them, I always say, I know that we would never give up a minute of this heart wrenching pain, not to have them in our lives. That True, would have the price, the price of love, I guess, is that that pain. And yeah. So we so we look fondly on the 16 years. I'm still waiting for 16 years. I'm hoping one of them will make it. I know that the two girls in in Connecticut, because they're being cared for by someone other than me, likely the reason they're still alive, um, are pushing uh, 13 and 14. So they're the longest lived rum raisin Irish setters ever, but that's because Sally and Gordon are phenomenal. Um, and, you know, it, we are so grateful um, for them in our lives. And I know it's so, I remember after I lost Daisy to bone cancer, I was driving down the road and I had to pull off because I went hysterical for no reason other than, I think she walked in my space in heaven. I do believe they visit us. So just so you know, if you think I'm crazy, you're right. I am. I'll admit. But I think <laughs> they come to us and they walk in our space and we feel them. And, yeah, you know, they they just are always they are always with us in our hearts. But I think sometimes there's a what is it? A time space continuum where they can actually, you know, brush against you or do something that makes you feel they're there so okay i'm gonna move on now um Connie. <laughs> i can never speak about daisy without crying um listen i yeah i we all have our heart dogs <clears throat> excuse me it's raining again so my throat is is uh catching but um i think for me uh 2024 is is going to be a year of opportunity um uh, I have been through some some major life transitions due to family illnesses and uh and you know getting to the to the end of that phase and uh really my dogs have seen me through it they have absolutely gotten me through it and uh you know rather rather than going and seeking massive psychotherapy I have just gotten out with my dogs and uh, made the most with them and my wonderful dog community here in, in Southern California and all of you. And we all went through a terrible time during COVID. So, um, uh, you know, we have gotten on the other side of that, fortunately. And uh, 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 again, I could not have done it uh, without without the dogs. So, um, you know, they, they will be with me forever in that regard. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Um, it, it's, it's really wonderful to know that, you know, our pets, we just got through with the therapy dog symposium and there was the, all the teaching was about, um, recognizing what your therapy dog needs and not overdoing it, um, because they absorb our energy. So as we are, um, dumping our buckets, uh, to them, uh, we also have to recognize they need a break as well because they'll never let us know. They do let us know, but we have to be aware that they're letting us know. I know Junie lets me know every once in a while um, as I was sleeping for the past 27 days with uh, Jay. He uh, let me know about five days in that this was completely unacceptable to him. He's not good with cats, so he wasn't with us. And so it wasn't acceptable to him. But I said to him, you'll be all right. So I took him on extra walks and, you know, he sat on my lap at night instead of Mariah. Um, so you're right, Connie, you know, they get us through and, and we have to recognize we have to help them as well. That's right. Yep. It's great. Um, I don't know, Valerie, if you want to chime in, but um, we're sending great feelings and great love to you um, to navigate. Yeah, I, I'm so grateful that you all have the animals in your lives that you do. I mean, if that's not just joy vibrating, I don't know what it is. I, I just, I love your stories, all of your stories. And um, I, I think um, the, you know, we're just, we're human. We're human and we, we don't want to give ourselves a break sometimes. We try so hard to be these perfect pet parents. And, and I think, you know, so often we are, but we can't let ourselves off the hook because it's never good enough because that's how much we love them. So it goes on a loop sometimes, doesn't it? And so that loop of I could have done this, I could have done that, I could have done more. 
did I do enough, right? And it just goes on a loop, on a loop, our human frailty. I used to tell my daddy uh, when I was driving home from the hospital, I had to drive under a viaduct to get up on the freeway. And the birds would all line up on the wire outside of there. And at the time I was um, leaving work, uh, was a particularly busy time for the birds because they were just loads of them. So it must have been a grand time to gather. And um, I had to sit at the light. So what did I have to do but watch the birds and watch them chatter and bounce around and visit with each other. And so um, one of the things I used to tell Daddy just days before he left, which was the 29th of December, I used to say, you know, I think the birds are looking down at us dead and just laughing their heads off at us poor creatures that are just earthbound. Here we have this freedom to fly. And then one will nudge the other and say, look at what they're doing now. What the hell are they doing? So I think we need to let ourselves off the hook. The loops I, will go. Yeah. Let I ourselves go. That. That's that's so important, you know, the mask on fur, you know, let, let yourself be okay. Well, we're learning how to redefine some of these things. After a while, when you say them, you say them, you lose the meanings to them. Or maybe don't dig deep enough to find out what does that really mean for you. It may not be the same for the next guy. So give yourself a break. You're doing incredible jobs. You're beautiful pet parents. They love you back. It's pretty basic right there. I love that. Oh, thank you for including me. Oh, we are so glad you thought to come because that's what this whole community is about. You know, we really do support each other. We are here for each other. We used to be here for each other every Wednesday, but now the first and third Wednesdays. And I think that's just about right. And if we need to change, we'll chat about it in the new year. Um, but until I see all of you again, I wish you and your um, wonderful pet families the best, your human families the best, safe travel if anyone's traveling. Um, I happen to have both my sons home, so my Christmas presents are complete. Uh, this will be the last time I'm sure that everything will be normal. I mean, it'll be normal, but when my, when my son, my husband gets married again, there you go again. Uh, when <laughs> When my son gets married, I'll have to be checking on what that means, that that underlying why I'm saying that. But um, when my son gets married, I'm sure it'll be a little different, but we do love Liana, so it's not a problem. So until next year, please, everyone, take care of yourself. Take care of Casey and um, Patsy and Miss Maggie Naughty, uh, Mr. Yoda. Uh, Miss Mr. Yodi, right. And um, Valerie, we're sending total love and affection to you. Hopefully you can feel that energy. Um, and for Sally and Kieran and everyone else who has been here, we send love and affection for the new year. And until next year, this is Deborah Hamilton and the MAP Community Call. It really is a soul feeding group. So come join us in 2024.